Hello, uh, my name is Rahan Khan, senior software engineer at AppScore, and I'm one of the developers of KubeDB. So as you all know, today in this session, I'm going to talk about RabbitMQ Ops request, day two lifecycle management of RabbitMQ clusters using KubeDB. So uh, on any cloud Kubernetes cluster, as for uh, performing day two operations, people generally include uh, operations like scaling up their clusters, both horizontally, vertically, uh, reconfiguring their clusters, or uh, maybe upgrading their versions, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but most of these operations are very tedious and uh, uh, sometimes uh, takes a lot of uh, efforts by the, by the cluster management. So uh, QDB makes it easier by providing CID based solutions uh, uh, for performing these operations on your cluster. Uh, people also like to include uh, monitoring solutions like uh, monitoring with Prometheus, Grafana, uh, setting up uh, alerts for their uh, database clusters. Uh, but in this webinar, I, we are going to mostly talk about uh, RabbitMQ Ops request, which are more focused on reconfiguration and scaling up our version upgrade, et cetera, types of operations. Okay, so at first we're going to talk about uh, RabbitMQ, like uh, what is RabbitMQ, uh, why, are, why people use RabbitMQ, what does it offer? Then we're going to jump into QDB minus RabbitMQ, why you should use, we're going to discuss why you should use QDB minus RabbitMQ, what does QDB uh, uh, does to your cluster uh, and uh, other stuff. After that, we're going to introduce RabbitMQ Ops request, like what is RabbitMQ Ops request, uh, how can you use it, and what is the basic workflow of RabbitMQ Ops request on your cluster. After that, we're going to jump into a live demonstration where I'm going to demonstrate how to use uh, this RabbitMQ Ops request to uh, perform certain operations on your RabbitMQ clusters uh, in Kubernetes native way. Finally, we're going to have a Q&A session where you can ask me any question regarding this whole stuff we're going to talk about. So at first, let's see what is a uh, RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is uh, generally called a uh, open source message broker. So as there are other message brokers like Kafka and RabbitMQ, uh, Kafka, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, etc. So what differs uh, RabbitMQ from other? What separates it from other message brokers or messaging systems? It is built on a publisher subscriber system and it supports uh, multiple messaging protocols like MQP, MQTT, etc. It also provides uh, certain decoupling and scalability options for you. It uh, has uh, two types of uh, queue. One is a uh, classic queue and other one is quorum queue. Uh, so both comes with each of their uh, own benefits and uh, also cons. Message durability and reliability, one of the most important uh, feature that uh, RabbitMQ offers. So you can publish durable messages or transient messages, both of them into uh, RabbitMQ and consume messages in both uh, either you acknowledge their durability or by not acknowledging them. And finally, flexible routing and, and multiple types of exchange uh, is RabbitMQ's specialty. You can use uh, multiple exchange type to publish messages to multiple queues uh, uh, with, a, with maybe a certain key or a message, message type. So here's a simple diagram, uh, how RabbitMQ functions. A producer publishes a uh, message into RabbitMQ uh, queue. So the uh, RabbitMQ provides multiple types of exchanges like direct, topic, or fan out. Uh, topic, actually, uh, if, you, if, if a producer publishes the message into a, a topic exchange, which are binded to certain queues uh, using labels or keys, uh, the messages will be routed to those certain queues. Uh, direct messaging, um, direct action just uh, sends messages or publishes messages into uh, the queues which are binded to the exchange directly. And a fan out is used to generally to uh, publish messages to all the queues with a, uh, without any, uh, without considering any queue or any strict binding. And finally, the consumer can consume those messages from the queues 
and uh, it can consume those messages either in acknowledge mode or either not acknowledging mode. So, kubeb minus rabbitmq. So, what can kubeb do for you in respect of rabbitmq cluster provisioning on your uh, cloud Kubernetes environment? So, kubeb can help you to provision your cluster very easily with a simple uh, CRD OML. And you can also perform version upgrade operation. You can perform vertical scaling if you want to uh, increase your CPU and memory uh, of your cluster uh, in, in runtime or dynamically uh, regarding the if your cluster requirement uh, asks for it. You can also increase your number of pods or number of instances or number of servers for your RabbitMQ cluster using horizontal uh, scaling. Reconfiguration is also an operation that KubeDB uh, provides. Volume expansion for increasing the storage and auto scaling monitoring using Prometheus Grafana and finally TLS support. So KubeDB provides all of this for you uh, with uh, simple CRD based solutions. So this is a simple diagram on how KubeDB works uh, in, uh, in respect of your deploying RabbitMQ cluster to performing this RabbitMQ ops request. So RabbitMQ ops request is basically a CRD or a custom resource definition that you can apply on your cluster to perform certain operations like scaling, version upgrading, storage, expansion, etc. So basically KubeDB uh, operator uh, comes with, uh, KubeDB comes with two uh, operators called provision operator and ops manager operator. It has other operators like order scaling operators and uh, other uh, webhook operators, etc. So, what happens is when an user creates an RabbitMQ instance using a simple CRD, the provisional operator, QB provisional operator, watches that CRD and it deploys all the necessary uh, <coughs> Kubernetes resources like secret services, uh, configurations etc and um, stateful says ports uh, to do and it completely completely provisions the RabbitMQ cluster without any manual intervention on your cluster then once the RabbitMQ cluster has been created all the uh, ports are up the user might uh, feel the necessity to perform any operations so he he will or she will perform a RabbitMQ ops request, uh, which is another CRD. He has to apply this RabbitMQ ops request on the cluster, and the RabbitMQ ops request will refer to the RabbitMQ instance, which is currently running on the cluster. Ops manager operator, keep the ops manager operator will continuously watch this RabbitMQ ops request CRD CR or custom resource which has been applied to the cluster and it will then apply a pause request to the RabbitMQ. The provision operator will pause the RabbitMQ cluster and perform the creation, deletion, scale up or upgrade operation on the pet sets or the ports. Once ops manager operator pauses the RabbitMQ and it performs certain operations, uh, the pet sets uh, or ports will be updated with its uh, latest request like uh, for a scale up update, if we have uh, the, the three ports running on the existing cluster and we require to uh, scale up our cluster horizontally to five ports, uh, the, uh, it, will, it will happen instantly one by one uh, using ops manager operator. Finally, the ops manager operator will also update the RabbitMQ instance itself and uh, complete the ops request. So after we get the updated RabbitMQ cluster with our scaled up resources, the RabbitMQ ops manager operator will finally resume the cluster and the provision operator will keep watching the operator and uh, continue its process. So that's how RabbitMQ ops request works. It's a very simple process and uh, you can very easily use this uh, CRD based solution to perform these operations on your cluster. So as for kubedb installation, kubedb can be installed using a very simple helm command, but uh, make sure you enable this feature get RabbitMQ2 
uh, when if you want to uh, get all the CRDs for RabbitMQ on a cluster. And you can also get uh, the a license from AppScore license server, uh, contact KubeDB team or AppScore team for uh, a tryout. Okay, so here we are. We're going to jump into a live demo session. So I already have a RabbitMQ cluster running here, as you can see. And I have this external IP here. So, I think this IP will not match. It's an older cluster. Okay. So, I have this RabbitMQ cluster running here. And as you can see, uh, the provision operator has uh, already uh, created three instances. Basically, this RabbitMQ cluster was installed using this simple OML. As you can see, like any other kubedb uh, CRD, it have an API version and kind. The API version should be kubedb.com slash vion alpha2. The kind should be RabbitMQ. You have to provide a cluster name and a namespace. Then in the spec section, you provide the version, how many replicas you want, and you provide uh, the storage amount you, you require for your cluster. You need to provide your own storage class name. Uh, available storage uh, from the available storage class on your cluster. Uh, you can also provide service, service templates where you can uh, provide specific services, specific uh, uh, configurations. Like here, I have uh, I want my primary service used for this cluster to use a load balancer type uh, so that it can be exposable to the internet. The storage type here I have set is durable. It can be also set to ephemeral. Uh, for transient uh, databases and the termination policy set here is wipeout. Uh, you can provide other, other options like do not terminate, do not terminate with block deletion, uh, delete, delete will, uh, uh, will let you preserve your uh, secrets and uh, PVCs in case you delete your database. So this is it. Uh, if you apply this OML, uh, the provision operator will create some pods, secrets. Uh, you can see this secret RabbitMQ admin cred. It, it contains a uh, RabbitMQ ad, uh, credential for the admin user. RabbitMQ config contains some bootstrap configs, configurations, and Arlen cookie is contains a cookie value, which is used to uh, perform communication between all of these uh, cluster pods. Uh, so, it has also bootstrapped some services. This is the primary service, which uh, matches the uh, name of the cluster, which is RabbitMQ itself. And here is the external IP. We can use this external IP and this port 15672 to access to uh, the management UI. And this port 5672 can be used to publish messages using MQP protocol. So, and this is the resource that we have applied and you can see it's uh, in ready state right now. Okay, so what you are going to do is right now, uh, let's assume that I need my cluster to uh, scale up uh, in terms of its storage. So KubeDB offers two types of volume expansion or storage expansion of option. One is offline volume expansion and the other one is online volume expansion. So for this demo, I'm going to apply a uh, offline volume expansion. You can see here uh, it has uh, the kind is RabbitMQ ops request. The API version is ops.kibdb.com slash beyond alpha one. You can provide any name to your uh, ops request. It should be deployed in the same namespace where the cluster resides. And you can apply always here. Uh, type is volume expansion. Database reference should refer to the cluster itself. And in the volume expansion section, you can provide the mode either offline or online. And uh, how much storage do you need for your cluster right now? So in my earlier cluster, the cluster that is running in my uh, in production, here you can see that uh, I have requested just one gigs of one, one, G, one GB bytes of memory here, storage here. And as for my new cluster that I'm, I want to upgrade, I want to upgrade the storage to 1.5 GB bytes. So if I apply this OML, the off, uh, off manager operator will do its work and 
all of these ports will be attached to PVC suite 1.5 gigabytes. So let's try that. If I apply an offline volume expansion, as you can see, an off secret has been created and at first it will show that uh, it's in progressing state. So eventually uh, the ports will start uh, restarting with extended PVCs. So let's wait a minute or two for the whole operation to complete. You can see the first port is terminating now. Okay, and a new port has a sp uh, span up. The second port is restarting now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the PVC attached to this port and see if the storage has expanded or not. So you can see that in this PVC attached to this RabbitMQ0 port, the resource request has been extended to uh, 1536 megabytes, which is equal to 1.5 GB bytes. So, yeah. So other ports have uh, similar operations and their storage request for the PVCs have also increased. Okay, so let's wait for a while. Okay. Yeah, so our RabbitMQ cluster is ready now. All of the storage for the ports have been extended to 1.5 GB bytes. And the offline volume expansion of request have been successful as well. So this is one of request. This is how of request works dynamically on your cluster without any data loss. So after that, we can uh, jump into, I think, vertical scaling. So this is a vertical scaling YML and it has a kind of a similar spec. So what we're going to do is we're going to request a CPU of 600 millicores and 1.2 GB bytes for my cluster. So if I see a current, one of the current port YMLs, like for RabbitMQ0, you will see that uh, where is it? Okay, this port right now have a CPU of 500 millicores and it is requesting a memory of uh, one GB bytes. So let's apply this YML and see how it updates our ports to use the requested CPU and memory. Okay. Here you can see uh, RabbitMQ vertical scale. The off request is progressing and the ports are, will be similar uh, restart in a similar fashion like we have already done for offline volume expansion. And the CPU and memory will keep updating for each of them. And as you can see, even during the whole operation, our cluster is ready. It will uh, suffer a, a little downtime but uh, but the whole cluster will never be down. 
okay so just one port remaining okay let's already check the rabbit mq0 port and see if the cpu and memory request have been upgraded or not Here, you can see the CPU has been extended to 600 milligram from 500 milligram, and the memory, uh, this will be equal to 1.2 GB bytes. So, and our obstacles has been successful and our cluster is still at uh, ready state. So that works too as well. After that, uh, we are going to perform a, version upgrade operation kindly keep the supports to a uh, rabbit mq version one is 3.12.12 .12, which is kindly running and let's say you want to upgrade your cluster to 3.13.2 so just this uh simple change in your yml the type should be updated version and uh, you have to provide the target version for your cluster let's apply this yml and in a similar fashion the whole cluster will be upgraded Okay, so I had applied a version of the request for my cluster. The off request is running, it's in progressing state. The ports are restarting with a new version image. The cluster starts uh, into critical state for a little time. As one of the ports is not ready and it becomes ready eventually. The second port is starting. Because you can see the version here is right now 3.12.12. We are expecting it to convert to 3.13.2. All three ports have restarted. And my off request is successful. Rabbitim to upgrade off request is successful here. And the cluster is ready and the version have been upgraded to 3.13.2. So this was easy as well. Okay. So let's jump into our last, last of request today, which is uh, we are going to scale up our cluster horizontally. Right now we have three ports running here or three instances of RabbitMQ servers. We are going to upgrade uh, the RabbitMQ cluster to, use, uh, to have five ports. So let's apply that YML. Okay. The ops request has been applied. A new pod have a spun up, as you can see here. We are expecting a total of five pods here. Right now there are three. Oh, we might need to wait a while. Yep. Spot is running now.
we are expecting the fifth pod to be joining the cluster yeah the fifth pod is here Okay, so all of my five ports are running now. Our cluster have horizontally upgraded from three RabbitMQ instances to five RabbitMQ instances. My cluster is now ready. And my horizontal scaling of secrets has been successful as well. So that's how uh, we have shown a few examples today in this session. Like uh, horizontal scaling, vertical scaling, upgrading your cluster to new version, offline volume expansion. Uh, you can also use online volume expansion as well, uh, which will expand your cluster storage without detaching the uh, PVCs. Uh, QDB also supports other obstacles like restart obstacles to restart your whole cluster, uh, reconfigure obstacles to perform. Uh, reconfiguration on your cluster to change or up, or update certain configurations in runtime. It also provides you a reconfigure TLS of request, which can be used to rotate your certificates after uh, the certificates gets expired, or if you want to keep uh, updating your certificates after uh, in certain time interval, you can update your certificates and perform other operations as well. So. This also well, and uh, so, till, so I think we need to show you how to access uh, the RabbitMQ UI, the management UI. As you can see, this service, which we are calling the primary service, it has a level called primary. It is a load balancing type. It is exposing an uh, external IP. So if I access this port 15672, uh, I'm going to eventually uh, can log into my cluster. So I'm going to log into the cluster and see the cluster status right now. Okay. The username is admin. So as you can see, the cluster has been upgraded to the version 3.13.2, which was previously 3.12.12. Right now I have uh, five ports running here. So this also works. And if you just check one of the ports, you'll find that the cluster is well connected to all the other ports. So, yeah. So that's all with the live demo session. Uh, we have shown you how to use RabbitMQ Ops request to perform operations on your cluster. Operations like horizontal scaling, operations like vertical scaling, uh, performing version updates, uh, restart, and other Ops requests. So, uh, so in your key, we have reached our Q&A session. You can ask me any question regarding the whole webinar. Uh, please, if you have any. Okay, uh, I think there are not.